Good morning. Great to see everyone here this morning. Uh, I do want to start here. A few announcements that um, that I want to mention, especially today. There's, uh, I, I'm sure many of you are aware, especially if you have students working in it, but the Edgeley students are serving brunch from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. today at the elementary school. Uh, I would assume is that in the gym, gymnasium? Yeah, or the, I guess it's the lunchroom too. Is that right? Um, so, yeah, the, at the elementary lunchroom slash gym, that's where that uh, fundraiser is going to be. So, anyway, it's, a, it's to raise funds for a trip to Washington, D.C. So, uh, if you have a chance today, if you don't have lunch plans, make your way over there and uh, enjoy, I believe it's pancakes and sausage. Could be wrong, but I think that's what it is. Uh, also, then, April 2nd, 3rd, and 3rd, uh, starting at 6 p.m. on those days. The Zion Lutheran Church is, yes, sorry. Oh, they're sold out. Friday the 1st, that is? Okay. Friday. Okay, so Friday the 1st, uh, April 1st, April Fool's Day. I'm not joking. It's true. They're going to do a uh, uh, rehearsal, the dress rehearsal, if you want, if you want to see it. Uh, April 1st is Saturday, we're, we're being told here. I, I don't know. Yeah. Okay, so the dress rehearsal is still the day before, but that's on Saturday, and then they perform Sunday and Monday? Okay. Um, you know, who knows? Maybe there'll be people reselling the tickets online. You guys really want to get some? Um, can check out that. But, okay. All right, then uh, Wednesday morning Bible study is continuing, and uh, that's it for the announcements today. Uh, prayer concerns... Um, it's a short list, but we are certainly continuing to pray for Sharon Fear. She is um, still in the rehab facility in Hillsboro, uh, as far as I know. I'm hoping to get up there this week to see her, so uh, maybe next week I'll have a little bit more of an update. But are there any other uh, announcements that need to be added here this morning and or uh, prayer concerns that we need to, to be adding? No? Yes? Okay. Okay. What's your What's your mom's name? Elaine. Elaine. Yep. For sure. All right. Thank you. Anything else? Any others to add this morning? Prayer concerns? Okay. If not, then please stand. We'll get started. Page fifty six in the green hymn. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us. 
so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name, amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for you. And for his sake, God forgives you all your sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. You may be seated now for the opening hymn. We are in, as, as of last Wednesday, which was Ash Wednesday, we are now in the season of Lent. And so our first hymn is definitely a Lenten hymn. O Lord, throughout these 40 days, page 99. stand again for the Kyrie, back on page 57. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Uh, please remain standing now for the hymn of praise, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing, page 499. my 
my heart, oh, take and seal it, seal it for thy courts above. <clears throat> Please remain standing for the prayer of the day. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord God, our strength, the struggle between good and evil, rages within and around us. And the devil and all the forces that defy you tempt us with empty promises. Keep us steadfast in your word, and when we fall, raise us again and restore us through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. This time, uh, you may be seated, and I'll invite the children forward for today's children's sermon. divided today. <laughs> Why don't you go sit by? Uh, All right. Okay. Well, good to see you guys. It's been a couple weeks. A couple, well, and a couple weeks ago, I made something for Valentine's Day, and I want to share it with you. Um, did you guys celebrate Valentine's Day? Yeah. I think the Edgeley School, they um, sent flowers around and stuff. You could do that. Yeah. Did anybody send any flowers? No. <laughs> uh, well, you might have seen some flowers at your house, maybe, for moms or dads. Um, so it's a fun way to show each other that we care, even though we know. We know, like you know, that your mom and your dad love each other, but it's still fun when they celebrate it, right? So... Um, we have been doing some readings in the Old Testament that have a lot of rules. If you pay attention to those readings, you'll hear them. And, and it can feel like a lot, but most of them are all about keeping love first. Okay, So it's rules about how we treat each other, how we um, our relationship with God. And it's just all in an effort to make sure that love wins, right? That we preserve love. Okay. So this is my question then. If it's all about love, then how big do you think God's love is? Like as big, well, do you have an answer? Tell me. As big as the whole earth? That's a really good guess. The whole universe? Because he probably, I mean, maybe the stars aren't alive, but he probably loves them. He made them. That's a good guess. Yeah, it, I think it's probably as big as we can imagine and then a little bit bigger than that. Um, so what it tells me then, oh, you have an answer too? Go ahead, Hudson. As big as the jungle. I think you're right. <laughs> it's as big as everything, right? Everything that we can imagine and also as in a way also as small as everything because it's as big as the whole, like every single person can fit inside of his love, but also it's small enough for just you, right? His love is all about you as a person, an individual, but about the whole world too, it's both. So um, that means that it's big enough for the person that you maybe have a hard time loving, right? You might have somebody that it's pretty hard to love it's not hard for God to love that person, which is good news. <laughs> um, so what I would like to do is I made, I tried to make a God-sized Valentine. I know it's not actually big enough to hold the whole entire world, but I'm going to pretend that it does, okay? But <laughs> the thing that I want to do today 
together is I want you to remember, like I said, it's big enough for the whole world, but also specific to you. So we're going to put all of our names in the heart, and then I'm going to put it outside in the lobby. And after church, I think everybody in our church should put their name on it too. So we can remember that God's love is big enough for everyone, but special enough for each and every one of us. Okay. So um, let's say a prayer, and then I'm going to let you guys grab a marker, okay? And we'll, we'll start the whole thing. We'll do it first before the adults, okay? So God, thank you so much for your love and for your commandment to love. We need to remember that that is the most important thing to always be working towards and preserving. Help us to love one another as we walk with you each day. In your name we pray, amen. All right, thank you, Sarah. Um, now, I'll invite the readers forward for today's readings. All right, the first reading is Genesis chapter 2, 15 through 17, and chapter 3, 1 through 7. The Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to, t to till it and keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, You may freely eat of every tree of the garden, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat of it you shall die." Now the serpent was more crafty than any other wild animal that the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, Did God say you shall not eat from any tree in the garden? The woman said to the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden. But God said, You shall not eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the middle of the garden, nor shall you touch it or you shall die. But the serpent said to the woman, you will not die, for God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was a delight to the eyes, and that the tree was to be desired to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. And she also gave some to her husband, who was with her, and he ate. Then the eyes of both were open. And they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made loincloths for themselves. Here ends the first reading. Psalm 32, half verse by half verse. Happy are they whose transgressions are given. Happy are they to whom the Lord inputs no guilt. While I held my tongue, my bones withered away. For your hand was heavy upon me day and night. My moisture was dried up as I the sun. Then I acknowledged my sin to you. You did not conceal my guilt. I said, We'll confess my transgression.
to the Lord. And you forgave me the guilt of my sin. Therefore, all faithful will make their prayers to you in time of trouble. When the great waters overflow, they shall not reach them. You are my hiding place. You preserve me in tr trouble. I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will guide you with my eyes. Do not be like horse or mule, which have no understanding. You must be fitted with bit and bridle, or else they will not stay near you. Great in tribulations of the wicked. Be glad you write, write in us and rejoice in the Lord. Romans 12 through 19. Therefore, as a sin came to the world through one man and death through sin, and so death spread to all men because all men sinned. Sin indeed was the world of world before the law was given, but sin is not counted where there is no law. Yet death reigned from Adam and to Moses, even over those whose sins were not like the transgression of Adam, who was a type of the one who was to come. But the free gift is not like the trespass, for if many died through one man's trespass, much more would have the grace of God and the free gift in the grace of that one man, Jesus Christ, abandoned for many. And that the free, free gift is not like the effect of that one man's sin, for the judgment following the trespass brought commend, commendation but the free gift following many trespasses bring justification if because one man's trespass death reigned through that one man much more will those who receive the abundance of grace and the free gift of righteousness reign in life through the one man Jesus Christ. Then as one man trespass that led commendation for all men, so one man's act of righteousness le leads to a quilter and life for all men. For, for as by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners, so by one man's obedience, many will be made righteous. Gospel according to St. Matthew, the fourth chapter. Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. He fasted 40 days and 40 nights, and afterwards he was famished. The tempter came and said to him, If you are the Son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. But he answered, It is written, one does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and placed him on the pinnacle of the temple, saying to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you, and on their hands they will bear you up, so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. Jesus said to him, Again it is written, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. Again, the devil took him to the very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. And he said to them, all these I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. Jesus said to him, away with you, Satan, for it is written, worship the Lord your God and serve only him. 
Then the devil left him, and suddenly angels came and waited on him. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Uh, please be seated. All right. Let's see here. So the uh, after after the storm this week, it it wasn't as much snow as they said it was going to be. But wherever the snow drifted, it tended to be pretty deep and pretty hard. And uh, when we first left the house after the storm, I I I pulled out with our our flex, which is kind of a car slash SUV, but more more a car in terms of how low it is. And it's also all-wheel drive, but it's the kind of all-wheel drive that doesn't really help you under certain circumstances. So I pulled out of our, I was, we, we weren't going far, we were going a whole like two city blocks to my parents. And, um, and I, I pulled out with the car and I wasn't paying real close attention and the one drift in our yard that did exist is what I tried to not drive through, but really straddle long ways. And the car just kind of lifted up on top of it, and there I was. Um, and and the, the, the dumb thing is, the way these traction controls work are when you spin, they stop spinning. So you can't really do the rock thing, is <laughs> he's shaking his head. So so I, there I was, right? And and my question to start today is, is this, and this is going to be a poll. I want some audience engagement here. Um, there I was in that situation. Now, now my question is, how do you define that situation? Did I get stuck or did I drive stuck? Okay. If I was driving stuck, raise your hand. Come on, there's got to be. Irene, your German background surely must be. You must drive stock, right? Yes, she shakes her head, yes. Does anyone else want to acknowledge their German background? <laughs> I mean, I, I heard it a lot, I'll say that. Um, of course, I, I was always confused, and, but most people here, they get stuck. You get stuck, and there you are, you're stuck. And I never could quite understand what it meant to drive stock. Um, but I did kind of for the first time, experienced driving stuck because this car thought it was actually driving uh, and it would do its thing and this, and I sat there and I was trying to spin and I eventually did get out. Um, you had to kind of trick it. You put it in park and then you go into reverse real fast and as soon as, you got about two seconds to hit it before the traction control kicks in. So I eventually was able to get out. But there I was, driving stuck for a while. and. You know, as odd as that sounds, so be it. But more importantly, I, I, it actually ended up be becoming a very good image, maybe a good theme or a good, a good uh, 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 phrase for what I want to talk about here uh, today. Today is Lent, or today is the first Sunday of Lent, and... As I say many years, there are different themes in Lent that we can focus on. There are themes of, uh, there are themes of just in, in various ways drawing closer to God. This is a season to, to do that very thing, to sort of come to terms with 
where you're at in your life and where God is at and, 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 and the distance between the two and, and how can that distance, how can that chasm be somehow lessened or made smaller? And there's different words that we use, but today the word I just want to focus on is the word confession. Uh, confession is something we, we probably are, it's not a new word to anybody, it's, it's, but at the same time, the role of confession in the Christian life, I'm thankful that we have it in our liturgy, that each Sunday we at least say the words, and that doesn't mean that we mean it. That doesn't even mean that we're really listening. But it's there for us every Sunday, and for that I'm thankful, because apart from the Catholic tradition and those who use a liturgy, maybe confession doesn't even come up in your daily life or your weekly life or your annual life. You don't really think about confession in the way that Scripture talks about it. And so today we... Want to, I want to focus on Psalm 32 to get us into this conversation about confession. Psalm 32, if I could ever get to it, here we go. It says, how blessed is he or she whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered, how blessed is the man or woman to whom the Lord does not impute iniquity and in whose spirit there is no deceit. When I kept silent about my sin, my body wasted away through my groaning all day long. For day and night your hand was heavy upon me and my vitality was drained away as with the fever heat of summer. I then acknowledged my sin to you. My iniquity I did not hide. I said I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the guilt of my sin. I don't so much want to talk about the idea of the, the, the one side of it being forgiveness today, which of course is huge. What I want to talk about is those first verses when the psalmist says, when I kept silent, when I kept silent, my body wasted away. Through my groaning all day, for day and night your hand, my vitality was drained away as with the fever heat of summer. When I kept silent. The image I had here is that a life without confession really is a life of driving stuck. We think we're driving, we think we're moving forward, but in fact, we're standing still. In fact, nothing is happening. We're driving stuck. When we keep silent, when we, when we don't acknowledge that distance that exists between us and God, that distance that exists between God's will and design for our life and where we're at, we enter into this space of driving stuck. In Proverbs 28, verse 13, I want to share with you a similar sentiment from Solomon. Proverbs 28, 13. It says, he who conceals his, transgress his transgressions, sorry, he who conceals his transgressions will not prosper. But he who confesses and forsakes them will find compassion. Here the, psalm, or here, um, uh, the author talks about it as he who conceals transgressions. Again, like the psalmist, he who is silent, but he who conceals these transgressions, covers this up, will not prosper. The word prosper here is not in the sense where we think of it as get rich. Really here, the word prosper literally can mean move forward. 
He who conceals his sin will not move forward. In other words, as a good German, he would have written, he who conceals his sin will simply drive stuck in life. (laughs) But he who confesses and forsakes them will find compassion. I want to do two things now, and that is, as far as getting us into this mindset, I I want to share a couple of anecdotal things in the past week that I've run across, and I just want to share with you. And then I also, I'm going to close by sharing a reflection on this text that another pastor had as well along the same lines. But first, I wanted to share with you something that I've come across this week, uh, and maybe you're familiar with it. I've been sharing with with Sarah a little bit, but um, has any of you been familiar with or heard about this um, seemingly, and I I don't want to say so-called in a negative way, but so-called revival that's happening in Asbury College in Kentucky? Is anybody aware of this? A couple of people. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. I mean, I just kind of became aware of it this week through some social media stuff, and, um, and I, I, I started looking into it. So Asbury, Asbury College in Kentucky is a, it's a small university, um, you know, smaller than something like Jamestown College even. Uh, it's, a, it's a Methodist um, university, private college. And on February 8th, so we're talking over two weeks ago, they have, they have chapel services uh, twice a week. And on that particular chapel service, there was a, a, a sermon given, and the pastor ended with just this sort of, um, sort of off-the-cuff thought in his prayer, and he said, Lord, revive us with your love. And a handful, maybe a dozen students stayed after that particular, um, uh, after the, uh, the sermon, and just were praying with one another. You know, young 18 to 22 year olds, whatever age they were. And something happened. In the middle of that time of prayer, uh, a young man stood up. And the way they say it, I haven't heard it. But he just offered a public confession. And the public confession was simply, this is, this is who I am. These are the things I'm struggling with. This is the sin I struggle with in my own life. And I just want to make public confession of that and ask you to pray for me. And so they stayed and they prayed. And as of a few days ago, those prayers never ended. That was February 8th, and for two weeks, over two weeks, the prayers continued and thousands and tens of thousands of people began coming to this little chapel at this university from all over the country and all over the world. Day and night for 24 hours, they sang, they worshiped, they prayed. And it's spreading across the country. Other universities are entering into the same kind of thing and it's spreading across the world and eventually the authorities in this small town of Wilmot or Will something Kentucky, wherever this college is, had to say, you know what, this isn't, we can't have 50,000 people in this community of 6,000. It doesn't work. Our infrastructure won't allow it. We can't have this many people. But that's how many people were coming. Just last weekend, there were 20,000 people there in a chapel, in an area where a chapel fits 500. And I could tell you all more about it, but I'll just tell you, go online and just look up Asbury Revival, and you'll find all you want. But the thing I wanted to say was that it all started with a man standing up and saying, I have some struggles. I'm not perfect, and I want to share that because I feel like I'm driving stuck. I don't think he actually said that. But it sparked a literal revival in that college, in that community. Maybe in this country, who knows? 
But it's interesting and it's fascinating to watch and I would encourage you to go and, and check that out. Um, in 1970, there was a similar revival at that same college. And it started in February of that year. And there's a whole documentary about it as well. And so um, I share that with you to share with you the power of confession. The power of what confession can do for a community, what it can do for an individual, what it can do in terms of reviving our faith. If as individuals you feel like you're driving stuck, consider confession. I think as a church, corporately, in our country and in our world, if we feel like we're driving stuck, maybe, maybe the answer is confession. I want, to stop, I want to end now by sharing um, a brief reflection on this same text. It's titled, The Joy of Being Cleaned. A long time ago when I had just learnt to drive, <laughs> I ran out of gasoline on a lonely country road. I gratefully accepted some from a nearby farmer. What he didn't tell me is that what he gave me was a mixture of oil and gasoline used for his lawnmower. Would that work? Too well, not so well. Um, it was an old car with a carburetor. I got back home all night. I got back home all right, but the next day the car behaved like a sick animal, coughing and sputtering. I finally made it down to the local garage where the mechanic explained to me that the wrong, what the wrong fuel does to the engine. There was thick, messy stuff stuck in the carburetor where there should have been clear gasoline. He cleaned it out and I felt, and it was as though the car felt, a huge sigh of relief. Even to hear the engine running smoothly was a delight. Now I was free again. Free not to have to worry about the car, but to think more positively about where I might go. That is the mood of this psalm, Psalm 32. It would be wrong to think of it as some do when the question of sin and confession comes up as a gloomy poem. Some Christians' traditions these days seem to do as little confessing as they can in case it spoils the happy mood that they want to maintain. But that's like trying to carry on driving while the engine is complaining it's running on the wrong stuff. Confession is facing up to what's wrong. The first two verses of the psalm list four different types of a problem. Offense or transgression, breaking of a known command. Sin, missing the mark of genuine humanness. Guilt or iniquity, which is the murky stuff inside me where there should be clarity and openness. And deceit, the vain attempt to pretend all is well. A very common problem today. And the reason we do this is the same reason I went to the mechanic. As the psalmist says in verses 3 and 4, it was hard to live like that. It's only when we discover why the psalm declares that people who confess what's wrong inside are blessed and happy. The psalm is actually a great celebration. It's over. It's gone. It's been dealt with. And instead of the heavy, dark feeling inside, there is a sudden sense of God's presence protecting and rescuing us. Only then do we discover that forgiveness isn't just a matter of bringing the bank balance, as it were, back from a huge debt to a balance of zero. Once the car has been cleaned out, we are free to hear a fresh call from God, to hear when he whispers and feel when he nudges, rather than having to be treated like an unbroken horse or a mule as it says in verses 8 and 9. A well-trained horse is one that has learnt to sense the rider's hopes and intentions, and even to anticipate them. It is as though the mechanic not only fixed the car, but showed me on the map some wonderful places to visit that I had never managed, imagined before. That's why this psalm closes once again with celebration. 
put off the task of confession and the mess will only get worse, leading to all kinds of trouble. But trust in the Lord and that trust will often begin by trusting him with our saddest and our darkest secrets. And we will find his love surrounding us. It's like going outside on the first spring morning when, where suddenly you realize it's not cold anymore. Lent is a time for discipline, for confession, for honesty. Not because God is mean or fault-finding or finger-pointing, but because he wants us to know the joy of being cleaned out like that carburetor. Ready for all the good things he now has in store. Let's pray. Lord God, we come to you today and we do confess. We confess that there is much within us that holds us back. Once much within us that causes us to drive stuck. Much in us that we want to be free from and unburdened from. Lord, I pray that each of us would feel the comfort of your love, the confidence in your mercy enough to enter into confession, to enter into a space of opening up to you and where appropriate to others. So in this season of Lent, we pray that as we confess, that we would also draw near. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, you can remain seated for the hymn of the day. It's 660 in the blue hymnal. stand at this time for the Apostles' Creed, or I'm sorry, the Nicene Creed would continue with in Lent. Uh, that's on page 64. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. 
He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Uh, I'll invite Rosa up for the offertory today and then the ushers forward to take our offering. Thank you, Rosa. Now please remain standing for the prayers of the church. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Lord God, we come to you today. We come to you today with uh, whatever burdens we carry on our hearts and in our minds. Lord, we surrender those to you. We come to you with whatever distance sits between us and you. Because of sin, because of hurt and pain because of addiction, whatever it might be, and we confess these things to you. Lord, we, we know that you are merciful and that you are compassionate, full of love, desiring us to come to you and to unburden ourselves, and so we do. We pray that in this season of Lent, your church the whole people of God would do just the same. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for the nations today. We continue to pray for our own nation, asking for wisdom, that you would grant wisdom to those leaders, municipal, and state, national, on all levels, Lord, that you would grant wisdom to our leaders. We pray that you would grant wisdom to the citizens. Help us to see a common vision, the common good, 
Help us to find unity in that. We pray for all the nations of this world. Where there is war, we ask for peace. And where there is poverty, we pray that you would provide. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, for this church, we thank you for the wonderful things that you do here each Sunday, the ways that you're working in people's lives, the way that you're working through this church. I pray that it would be a source of good news and an act of good news in our community. Go with, this, go with each person today, Lord God. Grant them, grant them your mercy as they turn to you in confession. Lord, in your mercy. And for those in need, we think of Sharon Fear, who is carrying such a heavy and long-term burden. We ask that you would restore her health, bring her home, so that she can be home with Arden and with her friends here back in Edgeley. We also pray for Steve's mother, Elaine, who has been diagnosed with COVID, and we ask that you would grant her peace, but also grant her body strength to fight the illness and to, be, and to fully recover. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please join me now in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Now receive this benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace. Amen. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. All right, if you would please remain standing for our closing hymn, Guide Me, Ever Great Redeemer, 343. coming out this morning. I hope you have a great week and God bless you this Lenten season. We'll see you back hopefully next week. Take care.